The following video contains mentions of alleged explicit messages sent to a minor and discussions of alleged corporate tomfoolery. Yes, in a video about bloody Roblox, viewer discretion is advised. Attention guests in the luggage claim area, welcome to the Jordania Volcano Hotel. A couple of quick reminders before you approach the elevator towards the lobby. Jordan Soapbox is a show broadcasted on site and supported via Patreon. If you would like to support what I do and not cause the country of Jordania economic ruin, consider supporting it for behind the scenes access and other rewards. It's recommended to frequent visitors subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for updates whenever new videos are made. Do you want to hang out with your fellow guests? Consider jacking in to the Cyberpunk Jordan Discord, where you can hang out with me and talk about Sonic and Sega stuff, among other things. And now, our elevator shaft will be departing for the lobby area. Thank you for your attention and enjoy your stay. Hello, my gummy bears. My name is Jordan, also known as CJ, and welcome to Jordan's Soapbox, the show that talks about anything that I want to talk about. So, as you can see, we're suffering from issues because of last time's adventure. I have no idea what's going on right now, including the scary terrors outside, but that's exactly where the Jordanian small fries come in. These are satellites housing powerful cameras that can withstand just about anything that's thrown at it. We're sending them through the big scary holes outside, and they'll be sending us information back in about, mm, 30 minutes. So I thought in the meantime, we would relax and ignore the potentially world-ending disaster I might have created and play Sonic Speed Simulator. Because someone on Patreon wanted me to cover that. For those unaware, Cyberpunk Jordan has a Patreon that you can support the channel with. And from Martian Gummies onwards, you can legally bind me to make a video about a topic you want. I would need to approve of the topic, of course, but I doubt it would be something I'd say no to. Gogs is here, being insane enough to do the highest tier solar gummies, wanted me to cover Sonic Speed Simulator. But what is Sonic Speed Simulator? Well, we need to do a little bit of history before we answer that. And let's start off with Roblox. Roblox was first released on September 1st, 2006 for PC. And summarized, it's a platform for developing and playing video games, mostly aimed at minors or those under the age of 18. Until recently. No. This makes it unique compared to something like a massively multiplayer online or MMO game like Star Wars The Old Republic or a sandbox game like Minecraft, which it is often erroneously compared to. It definitely has elements of both in its DNA, but Roblox is more like Steam. Games on Roblox, called Experiences, are various and equally made by various folks. Even coming up with this summarization was challenging. Despite Roblox being around since then and having a vibrant community, it was a small one and a blip on the radar for most of its existence. I'm willing to bet your only interaction with Roblox, if any, until recently, was the infamous <coughs> sound effect. But Roblox started to rise and then exploded during the COVID-19 pandemic with the company now claiming 164 million active users, including half of US children under the age of 16, which is insane. So it's natural that Sega would be interested in wanting to put the blue blur on one of the biggest platforms in gaming right now. However, this isn't the first time that Sonic has appeared on Roblox. In late 2018, Sonic Eclipse Online, also known as Sonic Simulator, was released and was essentially an unofficial Sonic the Hedgehog game on Roblox, involving different characters and environments from the Sonic Adventure series. Now, unofficial Sonic games have been made by fans since the 1990s, 
But what made Sonic Eclipse Online unique was that it had some shitty monetization practices. You hear that, Sonic Omens? Someone else did your shitty monetization crap before you. You should be proud. Or shamed, whichever comes first. To access it, you would need to fork over 4.59 pounds or $5.73 USD, an absurd and big no-no when it comes to fan works for Sonic. Further characters, such as Scourge the Hedgehog, were claimed to be locked behind additional paywalls. Although I can't find much information about this. Nonetheless, it was a notable and popular game on Roblox, but its creator, Dr. Rafotnink, would be under fire from various allegations, including sending explicit sexual messages to a minor. The backlash resulting from the allegations did not initially result in the removal of Sonic Eclipse Online, as when Roblox finally, eventually banned their account, that's a whole other story, I highly recommend this Guardian article about it, he had it transferred under a different account to hold the rights to it. It instead took Sega themselves, which to my utter knowledge is a first, issuing a DMCA against Sonic Eclipse Online to end it once and for all. Now, this is where things get interesting. This occurred in December of 2021 with Sonic Speed Simulator being released around April 2022. While the following is speculation, I believe the entire ordeal was the catalyst for Sonic Speed Simulator. Sega clearly saw the demand for a Sonic the Hedgehog themed experience on Roblox, and taking down Sonic Eclipse Online for understandable reasons, and replacing it with an officially licensed version was likely the best way forward. Whatever the reasoning was, Sega picked GameFam to develop Sonic Speed Simulator. GameFam, founded in 2019, describes itself as a quote, leading metaverse game developer and publisher that creates connected experiences with gaming communities and well-known brands. Prior to Sonic Speed Simulator, GameFam had released original experiences such as Starving Artists, that one didn't age quite so well. And license experiences such as Super NFL Tycoon. So with that kind of portfolio in mind, what exactly is Sonic Speed Simulator? Sonic Speed Simulator is an experience on Roblox that's free with microtransactions. Oh boy. Microtransactions are the bane of the video game industry. And while I do think there is a way to do them, such as the completely cosmetic items in Team Fortress 2, <laughs> Sadly, Sonic Speed Simulator fails at implementing them naturally and unobtrusively. In fact, I would say they're the opposite. They are unnatural and completely obtrusive. Because when you first start Sonic Speed Simulator in Green Hill Zone, the main hub heavily features premium podiums, which range from characters, friends, mounts, trails, and game passes that can be purchased with Roblox the official currency of Roblox that costs real-world money. I'll explain all of that in a moment, but what needs to be said now is how disappointing this is. Because these microtransactions are, whether intentionally or not, targeted at incredibly young children. And there have been reports in media such as Insider and The Guardian on how children can sometimes make unauthorized charges in the thousands of dollars on Roblox. Children don't always have a concept Roblox costs real-world money, and while parental controls can certainly help in these situations, I still believe that experiences or games in general aimed at a young audience should not feature these transactions right when you start it. Because the stuff featured here looks really darn cool, and I can only imagine a child thinking the same thing. But I think it needs to be segmented to prevent unauthorized purchases. It also doesn't help Roblox's banned accounts that have disputed charges, with the following in their terms of service. Quote, once a charge has been disputed with your payment processor, Roblox cannot issue a refund due to prohibitions under the payment provider's dispute process. Roblox reserves the right to suspend any account when unauthorized charges or to restrict an account's ability to purchase Robux, engage in trades, 
and or purchase virtual content. On a completely unrelated note, you might have noticed from this footage that I've been kind of slow for something called Sonic Speed Simulator. Yeah, you start off like this in Sonic Speed Simulator, but increase your speed with Chaos Orbs, which increase the level of your speed. You have the opportunity to rebirth or start over with enhanced abilities. Friends can also be added, which are either cute animals Sonic has saved throughout the Sonic series, or Chow. The Chow are especially favorites of mine, and they come in all sorts of shapes and colors that make them a lot of fun to collect. It kind of makes me scratch my head wondering why Sega themselves hasn't really done anything with these little guys. Look at them, they're, they're just really, really cute. Give them a game, you darn cowards. But they aren't all for show, as they increase the amount of chaos orbs and rings you earn. And that's, more or less, the main activity of Sonic Speed Simulator. Collecting stuff and going fast. But there are other activities that help make it not as boring. One of the most prominent ones are quests, which can range from finding an object on the map to participating in time trials, where you have to run as fast as possible on a predetermined course. The rewards range from rings, red star rings, which can be used for upgrades and similar, world keys, which are used to unlock different worlds, and characters. Another are the races, where you and other players race on maps, while NPCs such as Metal Sonic or Jet the Hawk can appear alongside, beating them earning you tickets to unlock more stuff. If all that sounded kind of confusing and complicated, yeah, it is. There are so many different systems in Sonic Speed Simulator that explain it all in a clear and concise manner is more or less impossible. I didn't even mention some stuff like trails that the player can have that kind of follows them around, or boss battles for just the sake of simplicity. On one hand, I can appreciate the amount of content that makes Sonic Speed Simulator fun, as relying on its core gameplay would make it stale real fast. On the other hand, it's difficult to grasp as there's so many different systems that it can take a lot of time to learn how everything works, and even then you may not understand everything. The aforementioned characters are arguably the bread and butter of Sonic Speed Simulator, as basically that's what you're here for. You're here to collect characters, and wow, there is a lot of them. Many of them are unique with either the character itself, their outfit, and even have custom animations exclusive to that character. I just simply wish it wasn't as hard as it currently is to unlock certain characters, and some of them have limited availability, making it even worse. And that's where the criticism of the microtransactions comes full circle. Many of them make obtaining these characters easier such as game passes, which allow for permanent upgrades such as doubling the race tickets used to unlock certain characters. Not only that, but the fact you can outright buy certain characters rather than earning them compounds the issue further. It's a shame because I love the characters that are represented in Sonic Speed Simulator. Some of it's from the games, including some that Sega really hasn't acknowledged in a long time, like Sonic Riders. Some of it is from the recent Sonic Prime television series, which you should totally watch, seriously. There's just a lot of fun variety. And that's the thing here. Sonic Speed Simulator, despite everything I just said, is fun. With one of the highlights for me being those races. There's even one theme to Sonic Riders, complete with extreme gear. It makes me really wish Sonic Riders would be ported or a new game would come out in that subseries for PC because Sonic Speed Simulator shows it can work, but that's up to Sega. I have to say that the activities are genuinely quite fun, nothing really does feel that monotonous, and the environments are really pretty for being in a Roblox game, with a special mention needing to be New York City from Sonic Prime. Seriously, that place is already pretty disotopian and depressing, but actually walking around it, it is more disotopian and depressing. So overall, it has its flaws for sure, but Sonic Speed Simulator is fun, and I would recommend it. But I don't. Yeah, let's talk about Game Fam for a moment. Around December 2022, a former developer on Sonic Speed Simulator named Digi Purgatory spoke about their experiences with GameFam. I would highly encourage you to read the entire thing on Twit longer, but let me share some of the highlights. Digi Purgatory accused the company of underpaying its artists, 
claiming he received a salary of $30,000 a year when the average salary for a 3D artist is $75,000 yearly. Crunch was also a factor in the development team, according to Digi Purgatory with accusations that they were mandated to update Sonic Speed Simulator every week, which complicated matters due to their family. This allegation actually does make some sense to me. Remember earlier when I said how long it took to get Sonic Speed Simulator out the door? Well, I understand that Roblox development might be different from other game development. Three months to make Sonic Speed Simulator is kind of insane, and it had to have been done with crunch. He lastly accused the company of poor communication, with them being terminated from the company, which they did not even notice until after submitting their work for the Werehog update. This started the viral hashtag on Twitter, Sonic Sweatshop Simulator, and GameFam responded by addressing the allegations, and <laughs> nah, I, I can't even say that with a straight face, nope. GameFam did not do so, instead highlighting how wonderful the company was, and everything is fine, and please don't mention it in our Discord server or you will be banned. Needless to say, the response spurred more GameFam employees to come out with their own allegations. Months later, in April of 2023, GameFam settled with a programmer named Joshua DeBoer, who filed a complaint with the National Labor Relations Board, NLRB, after they allegedly retaliated after inquiring to co-workers about their pay at the company. He stated, quote, People were definitely being paid very unfairly in comparison to me, by a noticeable amount. It's true that these allegations are nothing new in the video game industry. Several companies have been criticized for allegedly having such practices as well, but it nonetheless doesn't make it correct or make the accusations against GameFam any less important. If this is true, it's something that GameFam needs to acknowledge and work to address. Until that happens, I cannot in reasonable conscience recommend Sonic Speed Simulator. Yes, it's wonderful for what it is, but with this information in mind, how can I recommend it? It's supporting a company that I believe has failed its employees and needs to do better. And that isn't even to mention the terrible business practices Roblox itself is allegedly engaged with detailed in two excellent videos by People Make Games, links in the description. Not to mention the, I'm just gonna say it, predatory microtransactions that are aimed at a young audience. This bad stuff overrides the good stuff that would make Sonic Speed Simulator worth recommending. I won't tell anyone what to do. I won't fault you or treat you differently for choosing to play Sonic Speed Simulator. But at least for me, Sonic Speed Simulator isn't worth the Blue Blur's legacy with these things in mind. Oh, 30 minutes exactly, and the Jordanian small fry came back. Let's have a look here. Okay, it says... Oh. The entire multiverse has collapsed. Lovely. Well, uh... That's it for this episode of Jordan Soapbox. Join us next time as I have a full-scale panic attack about this information. Keep calm. Keep calm. Keep calm. Keep calm. Keep calm. Thank you for visiting the Jordania Volcano Hotel. We hope that you'll visit again soon. Before you leave, would you like something from our gift shop? Becca has the latest and totally not looted goods from all over the world. One item of note is the subscribe button, coming from the US state of California. It works best when you ring its bell and turn on notifications, so you don't miss an episode of Jordan's Soapbox. We also have a limited edition video that we also think you might like, and a collection of Jordan's Soapbox episodes in a playlist, all for the price of Wait a minute. Free? We're giving this out for free? Becca, we 